carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Often uh, the topical versions have an orange cap, hence my orange background here, although I must say with generic medications don't rely entirely on color. Oral carbonic anhydrase inhibitors have been around for decades and their use has been limited by systemic side effects that can be quite severe. However, there are patients who've been on oral carbonic anhydrase inhibitors for years and years and seem to get by fine. There's a very marked difference between individuals and how they deal with these medications. The topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are effective, less effective than systemic, and are generally well tolerated. The mechanism of action is that they're aqueous production inhibitors, and they do that by inhibiting carbonic anhydrase. And you need to inhibit at least 90%, in some places we'll say 99% of carbonic anhydrase to decrease aqueous production. For the oral forms of carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, it may be that some of the acidosis that comes from using the medication might have an effect on the intraocular pressure, but it's primarily the inhibition of carbonic anhydrase, hence the name. Unlike a lot of these medications, uh, unlike Timolol and uh, alpha agonists like bromonidine, this does work day and night, which is an advantage. And they lower the intraocular pressure by up to 50% if it's taken orally, but more typically 15 to 20% taken topically. So here's our little map of the anterior segment and a little red arrow pointing at the ciliary body just to help us remember that this decreases aqueous production. It's an aqueous inhibitor. And like other aqueous inhibitors, like beta blockers, it's useful for all forms of glaucoma. If someone has a failing corneal endothelium with Fuchs dystrophy or some other uh, reason that the corneal endothelium is failing, it may not be ideal in that situation because it does inhibit the pump. The oral carbonic anhydrase inhibitor should not be used in people with a history of kidney stones, especially acetazolamide. Use with caution in people who are on oral diuretics because they can become hypokalemic. We see a lot about sulfa allergy, and you should be cautious. Um, but in the recent medical letter, they basically said that topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are safe in people with uh, sulfa allergies, despite the fact that these are sulfonamide derivatives. And in a large study by Andy Lee and others, where they used very large doses, much larger than we use in the glaucoma world, to treat patients with idiopathic intracranial hypertension and self-reported sulfa allergy, these were well tolerated. So I'm not telling you to ignore sulfa allergy, uh, but I don't let that influence my use of topical carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. And there are, is evidence that even systemic carbonic anhydrase inhibitors may be safe in people with sulfa allergy. Certainly wouldn't be your first choice. Topical side effects, uh, people have complained of a bitter taste that's usually quite tolerable. They can have some stinging, which is a little bit more with dorsolamide than it is with brinzolamide. The oral version has lots of uh, systemic side effects. Almost everyone will have paresthesias in their fingers and toes. They can have a metallic taste in their mouth. Things that are carbonated, like uh, soda pop and beer, can, can taste flat and funny. They can have malaise and weight loss, and those would be reasons to consider stopping this. It can decrease your potassium, again, in, particularly in combination with systemic uh, diuretics. It can cause kidney stone, and particularly uh, acetazolamide, less likely methazolamide acidosis, and you can have hematologic idiosyncratic reactions that can be fatal, including aplastic anemia. So in the U.S., uh, and again, I apologize to people who aren't in the U.S., uh, we have two agents, dorzolamide and brinzolamide. They are quite similar. Dorzolamide burns more. Um, 
Brinzolamide as a suspension can leave some white particular matter on the eyelashes, which doesn't seem to bother people. It's available in two combinations. One is dorzolamide with timolol, and one is brinzolamide with bromonidine. Orally, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors are available as acetazolamide or diamox. This can come in a 250 milligram tablet, which is less expensive than the sustained release capsules, but also less well tolerated. It can also be given intravenously or can be made into a syrup for children. Methazolamide or neptazane is available as a pill. Acetazolamide is excreted in the urine. It is more likely to cause renal stones and probably not the best thing to use in people with kidney disease. Methazolamide is metabolized in the liver, so it may be safer for people who have kidney disease, but should be avoided in people with liver disease. I tend to start with methazolamide. My sense is that it's better tolerated than acetazolamide. And if the patient tolerates it, then I move up uh, to acetazolamide if I need it. The topical CAIs are two or three times a day. The oral uh, acetazolamide uh, is either the pills twice, four times a day or the capsules twice a day. This can be given intravenously. It can be made up as a syrup for children. The methazolamide is either two or three times a day. So these are agents that inhibit aqueous production. The systemic form is poorly tolerated and not used very often because of the systemic side effects and also because as a group ophthalmologists are becoming less familiar and less comfortable with using these agents. But you may need to use oral carbonic anhydrase inhibitors to tide you over while a patient is waiting for surgery or is unable to have surgery for whatever reason or if you're just very desperate and you've run out of other options.